Whitetails are at the top of many hunting lists, but did you know that there's a lot of different species that create unique opportunities? Mule deer differ in many ways, making it a completely different hunt. I'm Brittany Jill, and today on Destination Whitetail, we'll be profiling some amazing deer species that'll have you researching trips outside of your normal whitetail hunts. This is what we like to call Deer Nation. It's certainly no secret that we place emphasis on hunting whitetails throughout the continent here on Destination Whitetail. After all, they are North America's most common large land mammal and one of the most popular animals to hunt in the world. Today we are celebrating all the varieties found here in the Deer Nation. The whitetail has numerous subspecies, not to mention the ever popular mule deer. They all have different characteristics that make them a challenge to seek out and always have the home field advantage when it comes to terrain. You will either stalk them or wait them out on their terms. Me, it's all about visiting different parts of the country, different parts of North America where these varying subspecies live. If you love a good spot and stalk, there's nothing quite so wary as a mule deer. They evolved out in the open range and are quite comfortable there. Their eyes are eight power binoculars and their nose is calibrated to detect the slightest scent the wind delivers. One of the things you can look for though is agriculture. And you can see in the background here, we're hunting up against some private land where they farmed. That means these mule deer and some white tails are wanting to come in here to feed. Off in the distance, I spotted what looked like a pretty good buck, and sure enough, he was a shooter. I started sneaking closer, getting ready for the ambush, when all of a sudden he stopped, and he stayed in one spot forever. Well, I finally figured out why. He was watching all his does around him, and as they were coming nearer to him, he didn't have to go anywhere. He just stood there. So I sat there and sat there, hour after hour, trying to figure out how to get this buck without killing myself because the only scenario I could come up with was just to start crawling for several hundred yards to get within shooting range of him. I kept going and going. Finally, I stopped to take a breather and decided this was close enough. I had to be under 250 by now. I set my gun up on the bipods and lo and behold, this buck jumps up. You know why? There's a road grader going by. First, a couple does popped up and started bounding towards the buck. Then he stood up and looked back. I did not hesitate a second. Yeah. Can you believe that? This has been one long hunt on public land, and it couldn't have ended any better than that. Nice older mule deer buck, heavy and super brow tine. Destination Whitetail is brought to you by Browning Trail Cameras, by Thompson Center, America's master gun maker, by Analogix, protect your herd with the power of science, by Sever Broadheads, straight through it, Alps Outdoors, exceed your expectations, and by Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. The kill is anticlimactic, said Fred Bear. It's not why we hunt. He didn't mean that. It was a clever, downright brilliant, 
giant statement to let people know that the kill did, he did articulate that the kill took place in a second. It was over in a second. But the hunt was examining the calendar, remembering the last year's sensations, feeling the changes from summer to fall. The geese are forming. The animals are more active. There's a change in the spirit. It's already happening in August. And no kill night, but we're already hunting, aren't we? We're sharpening those arrows. We're sighting in those guns. We're putting on the new sling, getting a new scope, sharpening that knife, laying out our wool. We're hunting. That's the hunt. We're, we're hunting already. We haven't killed anything. That's what he's talking about. It's all the, it's the blood brotherhood. It's the call, the inescapable call. We have to do this. It's not bowling. Can you imagine a deer and deer hunting reader going, eh, nah, I'm not going to hunt this year. Yeah, not this year. It's inconceivable. It's in our blood. It's in our DNA. It has to happen. Part of the spirit of the deer nation is pushing ourselves to explore outside our boundaries and challenging ourselves on new terrain for a new deer species. The coos deer is one such subspecies. These smaller framed cousins of the whitetail will stretch your legs here in the mountains of northern Mexico. We hunt these coos deer in a variety of terrain. A lot of big hillsides, rocky outcroppings, ocotilla, cactus, and we also hunt them in the oak trees. Um, this particular part of Sonora on Ranch Mababi has just thousands and thousands of acres of oak trees. And the deer, obviously, like whitetails, they love the acorns, so we hunt them in those locations as well. In a way, it's almost intimidating hunting coos deer. They are small. I tell you, when you look at them in a scope, it reminds me of hunting coyotes. When you see a coos deer at 300 yards, you put the scope on and you go, oh my God, he looks like he's 600 yards away. It's because I'm used to seeing big Midwestern deer. These deer maybe weigh 120 pounds and they're so elusive. They blend in so well with their surroundings. These coos deer are a very diminutive species. They average around 120, 125 pounds. So the racks obviously are smaller too. In fact, it only takes 110 inches to make Boone and Crockett on a coos deer. And we just came over the first bench and I look over and there's a buck and he's running. I can, his tail, I can see his, his frame. And Ted got the, the binoculars on him just before he disappeared. He said, that was our buck. We just bumped our buck. And he's going down this cut and Ted said, let's circle around, let's get some elevation. Maybe we can get ahead of him. Maybe we can see him getting up the next slope and, and get a shot at him. And we get up to the top and we find a little bit of shade and we sit down and start glassing. But you know, an hour later we're still glassing and now we're starting to have our doubts. Okay, the buck just blew right through here. He's gone. What do we do now? And then Ted looks up and he sees a couple does. He said, wouldn't it be something if that buck stepped out and was chasing those does? And out of the corner of my eye, I caught some movement and I look over and this buck is coming out of nowhere. He's got his nose down and he's trailing those does. Yeah. I said, wouldn't it be something if those two, if that buck saw those two does and he came up out of the bottom to him, and it wasn't 10 seconds later that he, you said, there's the buck. He's a great management deer. He's an older deer, he's gone down hills genetically. And you know, in my opinion, I don't measure these coos deer in inches, I measure yeah. them in vertical feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you paid the price for this boy. Cool, they are awesome. He's an that, older deer for sure. Older deer. He's shrunk way down. The main beams are down. He's got nice mass through here though, doesn't he? Yeah, for a koozie dust. Yeah, absolutely. For, yeah. 
Look how small their bodies are. Bodies are small, dude. Oh. Hey, it's a tough target. Good shot, man. <laughs> Thanks. Congratulations. If I could give one piece of advice for anyone that's coming down to do a coos deer, it would be to prepare for the hunt in so many ways, physically and mentally. When we return the amazing story of the albino buck of Buffalo County, and we chase access deer in Texas and Hawaii, this is Destination Whitetail. The Eliminator 3 laser scope from Burris is an innovative and effective hunting rifle scope combining outstanding optics, laser range finding, and trajectory compensation for the exact ammunition you choose to hunt with. Obviously there's a lot of big bucks in Buffalo County, but uh, you know this albino buck, he, he was really big. And knowing that you couldn't shoot him it made it a little bit more special because we were able to watch him grow. Um, you know, as a, a one-year-old, the first time I filmed him, he was just a little seven-pointer, but uh, you know, it was still pretty cool. You know, just to have an albino buck, you know, come past you with your camera. When he was three, he actually came by my tree one cool November morning, and I had my camcorder with me, and I actually rattled him down to me, uh, came right to the base of the tree. I got pretty good footage of him probably 20 minutes of footage. Um, he messed around with a couple button bucks, then he uh, went down the ridge, and um, actually I, I grunted him back, I wanted to get more footage. So he came back to me, and then he took off up the ridge, and uh, that was a pretty cool encounter because now he's got a pretty developed rack. He's three years old, probably in the low 150s, so a really cool encounter for me. We didn't know how long he was gonna live. I mean, every year we, he made it, we thought, well, this could be his last year, being an albino buck. But, uh, you know, he got five and he was bigger, six and he was bigger, and uh, he just kept on growing. Big body, 300 pound deer, close to 200 inch typical. He really was something pretty special. So at 10 years old, the albino buck officially ended his reign as the majestic albino buck of Buffalo County. Uh, a couple of the neighbors had seen him out. Um, it was early summer. He couldn't quite get up the bluffs anymore. and. Uh, you know, it was just a great story that finally had an ending. Uh, the buck was never gonna be shot. We knew he would die of old age. And here it is, 2010, he had outlived all of our expectations as far as age and the size of his rack. And uh, just, like I said, a great story put to rest. Axis deer are gaining in popularity as the perfect off-season hunt here in Texas with high success rates over a season that never closes and a rut that never ends. We thought that might get your attention. These exotics offer an affordable hunt when your calendar allows, with tags available over the counter, and you choose the weapon. Axis deer are also found in Hawaii. How does that sound as a destination? Gosh, what a deer. Look at that. Oh. That's a man, that's nice, Dan. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. What a beautiful buck. Holy mackerel. Wow, that is a beautiful animal. Thanks again, Pat. Oh yeah, well nice Appreciate one. It. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Good one. I will tell you something. Of all the deer species that I have eaten. Axis deer. I've heard it, now I get to experience it. I mean, that's why we bring coolers to Hawaii, to take meat back, and that says a lot. Destination Whitetail is brought to you by Decked. Work smarter, play harder. Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Plus technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt.
by 10-point crossbow technologies, there is no substitute. Get armed and deadly with Easton FMJ arrows by Sig Sauer Electro Optics. Never settle. And by Matthews Archery. When we come back. It's a rare deer, it's a unique deer. It inhabits some great terrain. It's spot and stock hunting on steroids. This is the kind of hunt I relish. This is why this is a bucket list deer for me. Plus, more thoughts with Uncle Ted when Destination Whitetail returns. Bucket lists are a common practice across the deer nation. For some, the lure of an elusive species has a strong pull. Gordy Cron's list includes the Carmen Mountain Whitetails in the rugged area of southwest Texas. He's always wanted to do it and knew it was possible only if he could handle the rough country. Uh, this is a big bucket list deer for me. It's a, it's a rare deer, it's a unique deer. It inhabits some great terrain. It's spot and stock hunting on steroids. This is the kind of hunt I relish. This is why this is a bucket list deer for me. What is, what is really unique about these little Carmen deer? Obviously, if a guy's wanting to kill 200 inch whitetail, this is not the deer you're looking for. We're, not, we're less than 20 miles from the Rio Grande River. Uh, these little deer, are, they, their home ground is in Mexico, and they derive their name from the Sierra del Carmen Mountains in old Mexico. Uh, they only come up into Texas 20, 30 miles in different areas. Uh, they're, they're very, very small little deer, very unique little deer. If a guy wants a really neat hunting experience, similar to coos deer hunting, this is a deer for you. This was only a three-day hunt, so when you start a three-day hunt, it seems like you've got a lot of time, but that time can go by quickly. And the first day we got out and we, we did a lot of driving around just to really look the ranch over, and we didn't see a lot of deer. We just walked in to take a look at the waterfall here, and we jumped a couple of um, whitetail does, Carmel Mountain whitetail does right out of the little flat there. It must have been bedded down. Okay, so we really didn't get in on anything the first day. Um, second day comes around, now we're looking, we got two days left, and we do what you typically do on a Texas hunt. You spend some time in the truck, you get up high, you get out and you glass and you glass and you glass. Uh, so we drove out, got up on a high place, and just started doing our glassing. I mean, it was perfect morning, beautiful light, kind of cool, um, just a perfect morning for doing some optics work. And, we probably weren't up there, I don't know, half an hour. All of a sudden, off to our right, Steve taps my shoulder, buck, buck. And we're looking over, and sure enough, there was a buck standing over in the draw. And I could see it was a buck right away, but I couldn't really see you know, what kind of character he had, what kind of antlers he had. But then he stepped up and uh, st stood broadside, basically, on the hillside. I mean, when you see a mature deer, you know, it just grabs your attention. You know it's a mature buck when you see it. And he was out there on the next ridge over, several hundred yards away. We got the spotting scope on him, and we worked him over for a long time. We decided to back off that deer. We drove around for the rest of the day. We saw a couple other bucks, but, you know, I'm thinking tomorrow that four by three is gonna look a little bit better. I didn't come here to shoot a record book buck. I came here to shoot a mature deer you know, I, I wanted the challenge of shooting a mature deer, but I had decided at this point, and Steve and I had discussed it, that we'd go back to our little honey hole in the morning, and if we got a chance at that three by four, and it was a good chance, yeah, we would not hesitate. We'd go after him. Uh, we got up there, started glass, and we picked up that, that three by four right away. And he was, just like that other guy, he was right in the same place where we'd seen him uh, the morning before. It was a pretty nasty climb. We just took our time until we just got up to the, the rim of the hill, and that's when we saw the doe, and we knew at that point we were in pretty good position. We still needed to get up over the rise so that we could get down in the sticks and make the shot, but at this point, we were just a little over 200 yards away, so if we could scoot ahead 20 yards and I could get on the sticks, we'd have that 200 yard shot. But mind you, we hadn't seen the buck yet. We assumed he was there in that brush right next to the doe. And he says, right above the doe. So I just look up and, I mean, I don't know how he went from here to here, but all of a sudden he's just standing there and he's standing just broadside. And, and uh, I get up on him, I get up on the sticks and he moves a little bit, he's walking away and then he stops again. And uh, perfect opportunity, right at 200 yards. I was on a solid rest. And, 
I mean, that's really important out here. When I tugged the trigger, I felt pretty confident that I was gonna make the shot. And I heard, I heard that bullet smack flesh and you know, it's the greatest feeling in the world. And I saw him tumbling down the hill and I, I knew I had my Carmen Mountain Whitetail and I, I was pretty pumped. I have a deer tag. I must fill this by all biological resource stewardship responsibilities. We must kill the deer. We must. We are morally, intellectually, and I believe spiritually obligated to bring balance to God's natural annual productivity. For me, it's not the bucket list, just checking them off with my Sharpie, no. For me, it's about going to these different environments, these different landscapes, these different regions of the country and hunting deer and seeing how these deer exist. And of course, you also get the benefit of sharing some of that knowledge that you have and what other hunters share with you from those areas and that all makes you a better hunter. So no matter what type of deer you're hunting or where it calls home, get out and enjoy every corner of the Deer Nation. This is Destination Whitetail.